Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the anointing, for all that you have done, for all that you're doing and all that you're about to do. We give you all the praise and give you all the glory in Jesus' name. We all say amen. The, the ministry, um, there, there shouldn't be anybody in this ministry. It's not a part of the culture. That's not connected at some level in a connect group, in business, in worship, in evangelism. In evangelism. And one of the things that you might not know is that um, I'd like Minister Jonathan to come up this morning. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you how awesome the sun is. And so his whole desire around evangelism is, is one thing. It's a level that he loves evangelism. But he loves the prison ministry. So, so two weeks ago, he comes, he buys a book called Your Payday. He, he buys the book. And he says, sign this apostle. I say, what are you doing? He says, I'm on my way to the prison. I'm going to be teaching on this book. And I'm going to be then giving out this book to somebody at the end of the service. He'll tell you the rest of the testimony. But here's what blessed me so much. The anointing on his life and to the desire to teach and to evangelize, so strong on him, that now we are having to go and put all our books together, the, the, uh, the business people, and we are putting a project together to go and teach on your payday in prisons. You're not doing right this morning. There should be a better clap this morning. These are the leaders that God is raising up that have a heart, not just for the house, but a heart to see the nations changed. That when they come out of prisons, they're going to get a payday. But it's coming through the kingdom of God. Amen. So I wanted him to share what his experience was like. Um, please encourage him. Eh? Good morning, Apostle. Good morning, Pastor Z. Good morning, Church. What an honor and a privilege it is to share with you today. Um, Yesterday, Apostle shared in prayers that it's not only an honor, but it's a privilege that we get to serve in the house and in the kingdom of God. Last week, as I was ministering in the prison, I was sharing on the power of a choice. And at the end of the service, I pulled out the book, Your Payday. When I pulled out the book and I showed it to them, those guys' faces just lit up. Because they might be incarcerated for a season, but they know that their payday is coming. There's coming a day when they're stepping out. They're coming to a day where the Paul and Silas gets together and they come into a midnight hour and they praise the Lord and they sing hymns and they give glory to God and they say, Lord, we are stepping out. We are coming into a place. We know that we are called to be prime ministers. We know that we are called higher than this. We can be in this place for a season. But we are stepping out. We are moving out. We are coming. We are coming for all the promises. And the promise is yes. The promise is amen. That, that is why I honor this man of God. This man of God. I've been working with him for 10 years. He's been laying foundations in my life. He's been doing, and he's been just sowing and sowing and sowing. But it is my time to take what I've been given and run with it and go to a place and tell people, your payday is here. Your payday is available. Your payday is right at your doorstep. It is for you to take it. So, that is Jonathan. <laughs> but it only came to a place of serving. Sowing and serving. Sowing and serving. Being faithful in the house of God. Honoring the house of God. Knowing that this is my house. Knowing that I'm called to this place. Knowing that I cannot go anywhere else but serve. Lay down my life as a son in this house. Because as apostle always teaches that this covenant of God cannot rest on slaves but on sons. And if you are a son of... The If you are a son in this house, you cannot see the house lacking and knowing the gift inside of you. 
and knowing that you carry something and knowing that I can do something because each and every one brings your fire. That is how we have a corporate anointing. If you're not bringing your fire, if the house is lacking, it's because someone in here is sitting. Because if you're sitting in the boat, it only takes one person to walk on water with Jesus, to see the principles with Jesus and say, you know what? We're taking it to the next level. We're not comfortable in the boat. So if you want to get involved in street evangelism, in prison ministry, fill out a connect card because it's there where you're going to see God work. Come on! Come on! Shout! There's a son in the house. Come on, celebrate a son in the house. You've never heard him preach. Today you're hearing the preacher. We celebrate you, my boy. Come on, one more time. Thank the Lord for this man. Glory, I feel I can preach now. Glory be to Jesus. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. The title of my sermon this morning, My Father's Business. My Father's Business. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Read with me. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders. So, it speaks about the authority. It speaks about the power of God that rests you heard him say today, not on slaves. The government of God rests upon the shoulders of sons. The government does not even rest on babies, does not rest upon the child. A child is born. You are born again into the kingdom of God, but the government of the kingdom of God and the inheritance only rests upon sons. A child is born, a son is given. Jesus is born as a baby in a manger. When he's 30 years old, the son is given. He comes out of the water. The father says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Not this is my beloved baby. This is not my beloved child. It is sons that can carry the anointing, carry the power, carry the fire, can go into a prison and say, you're coming out and you're staying out. Is there anybody with me this morning? A child is beautiful, but a 26-year-old man with a dummy in his mouth is a terrible sight. Luke chapter 2, verse 41. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was how old? How old was Jesus? Twelve. They went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. Keep moving. When they had finished the days as they returned, the boy, the boy, the boy, the boy, not the man, the boy he was learning, he was studying. He was developing around the kingdom of God. Next week, I'm launching the Kingdom Academy as a year course to teach you up so we can raise up the boy. We can raise up every, with the anointing every son to come into what God has got for them. When they had finished the days as they returned, the boy Jesus. You know, when people say that, the G, that Jesus is my heart, Jesus is not in your heart. Jesus is in heaven, seated at the right-hand side of the Father. The Christ is in your heart. It's the anointing that's in your heart. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, but what every son understands, that there is an anointing. What is Christ? Christ is not his surname. Jesus Christ, that's not his surname. Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. When you understand that you are son of God, you are a steward of the anointing of God upon your life. The boy is trained, he's being developed on kingdom principles. Because God is not looking to the boy, he's looking to the man. He's looking to the son. The boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother did not know it. 
But supposing him to be, have been, with, on, on, been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him out among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. So it was that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers. He's training the boy. The boy is being trained, both listening to them and asking them questions. It's good to ask a question. Not on a Sunday morning, on a connect group on a Wednesday night. Amen. <laughs> and all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Even Jesus had to be trained up with kingdom principles. And this is what he said. So when they saw him, they amazed and said, his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, why do you seek me? Did you not know that I must be? Come on, somebody. The father's business is in operation in the earth. And the father's business is not for children. It's not for babies. It's for sons. Sons who understand how to steward the anointing of God upon their lives, that they go into regions, they go into places, and they begin to function on a different level than anybody else. Is there anybody that is going to say an amen this morning? Is there anybody going to bless the Lord this morning? When you are being located for greatness, God will always locate you in the house of God. I want to say it again. And any time God wants to deal and to find somebody that he can use for his kingdom and for his glory, he's going to have to go locate that person in the house of God. Because when God puts the anointing on you, and listen, it's not money. We'll speak about that today. It's, the anointing attracts money. God's not looking to put money on you. He needs the anointing on you. And for him to put the anointing on you, he's got to find you in the house of God. Jesus was found in the temple. He's been selected by God. He is anointed for service. You can be born of God, but not trained of God. That means you may have the right to a thing, but not matured for the thing. Sometimes, look at your neighbor and say, you don't need a miracle. You just need information. Amen. Jesus, he was studying. He was asking questions and he was, he, was, he was saying some things to them. So when you are a son of God, you become a candidate for the wisdom of God. Babies are not interested in the things of the kingdom. Babies, you know, babies, all they want to do is be fed. All they want to do is they, they want their nappy changed. And all they want to do is to pick them up a little bit so they can burp. That's babies. You never came here for a hug. You came here to develop as a son of God in the house of God with the anointing of God upon your life. You're going to have to clap your hands this morning and just pretend. So what God does is when you begin to step out of this, the, the, the child that was born, you, we know you must be born again. But when you get born now, God has got to develop you. You cannot get offended for nonsense. Only babies get offended for nonsense. They want to they, they, they wanna watch what they want to watch. They want to play with the, with the PlayStation all the time. They're not interested in kingdom business. But in this house, there are sons and daughters that are going to clap their hands right now, believing that they are busy with their father's business. Is there anybody that's going to clap their hands and say, God has got a business? That your father has got a business. God has not called you even a Christian. The world called the, the people that were born again Christians. It was, a, it was a term to mock them. God has called you a son and a daughter. A son and daughter. So the idea of sonship was God's idea. God wanted a family. He wanted sons. His idea was a royal family with sons taking care of his estate. Now I may speak, about, speak to you in terms of why you need a spiritual father. You need a father to guide you and to help you, number one. Number two, your father administers your nourishment. You eat. That means you eat what your fathers eat. 
If God is feeding me in the week and speaking to me about uh, yesterday in prayers, God dealt with, you, you can't function the kingdom of God with pride. You, 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 you got to know that if you're going to work with the anointing, there's got to be humility. That came out of my prayer time and I shared it with the church. So what God is feeding your father, I'm feeding you. Come on, Dr. Winston is here this week. I go and we're going to develop. We, we, we've trained and developed around the spiritual father that God has given us. And the food that he eats, we eat. You've got to be there on Wednesday morning. Amen. At, at, the, at the business breakfast. It's sold out though, but you can come and serve and serve the men and women of God. It's 500 kings that are coming together. You've got to get in on the Father's business. You cannot be lazy. You cannot sit back. You cannot walk with no understanding. A son of God is always looking for an answer. You're not looking for money. You're looking for an answer. You're looking for the spirit of understanding. Why? Because that's where the anointing flows. Number three, your father, uh, listen, stop looking for miracles. Your father's putting the food on the table that you need to eat. Stop eating everybody else's food. No, I just want the prophetic word. No, I gave you the word. Grow up. That's the word. I said, that's the word. I said, it's time to mature. Listen, the wealth of our house is determined not by how much money we have, but by how many matured sons we have. Sons that can get up and say, I'm paying for my, the payday book, I'm going out to preach, and we're going to let the world know that there is a God who's got a payday for them. They don't have to rob and cheat anybody else, there is a payday. Come on, somebody. Number three, your father affects your relationships. When you see me on Wednesday and you see me with Dr. Winston, I'm picking him up. Uh, from the airport tomorrow, and then for that breakfast, I pick him up at Michelangelo, and we're traveling from there to, to the place, and all his entourage, the people that comes with him across the globe, those are my friends. And if you are my son in this house, they become your friends, because it impacts your life, the kind of relationships that I have. That's what a father does. And so, Saul, when you look at David, and you look at David's functionality, David, David's natural father wouldn't recognize that he's the next king. He needed a spiritual father to come and tell him that yes, boy is anointed. Your natural parents can't tell you that. All they remember is how much nappies you changed and what you stole and what you messed up with and how you wet the bed. But they can't tell you that you're anointed. That's why you need a spiritual father to speak into your life, to let you know your DNA is not from your natural father. It comes from your spiritual father. Come on, somebody say amen. I'm dealing with sons. So your father is the source and author of your spiritual DNA. And for many people that never connect with their spiritual father, they become orphans. They begin to wander in the world not knowing who they are, doing their own thing, and the enemy beats them over, and they don't understand that they, God has given you a spiritual father to connect with so that the power of God can rest on you so that ye can actually find rest. The vision finds rest not with me on you. So the orphan heart has been the derailing of the sons of God. Your father, your spiritual father activates your gift. Number five, your father authors your wisdom. And number six, your father, when you find a spiritual father, unlocks your inheritance. Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. He was fathered from above. When God brought us in, because we are born of a natural seed, we need covering. We need fathers. We need, the Bible says you have many teachers, but you don't have many fathers. Somebody who can correct you. I can know whether you're a son or a daughter of God by the, how you handle correction. Because sons know how to receive correction. Church people don't like it. But sons in the kingdom enjoy it because they, it's a correction. Whom, God, whom he loves, he corrects. What kind of a son, the Bible says, would you be if you can't receive correction? So when you come into the house of God, the number one thing is that because I'm a son of God, I, whom God, listen to the scripture, whom he loves, he corrects. If no one has ever corrected you, you've got to be concerned about God's love for you. 
I love it when God corrects me and says, son, you're going in the wrong direction. Because I know that's, that's a loving father. Why? I'm about my father's business. Is there anybody that understands that I need to be corrected? Listen, a flight from Johannesburg to Cape Town, do you understand it's never a straight line? It's correction all the way. So Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. And 11 so what, what does God do? He gives you an apostle. And he gave himself some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For what? For what? For the equipping of the saints. For what? For the work of the ministry. For what? For the edifying of the body of Christ. He gave me not to go out and go and do whatever I need. I'm here to equip you. I'm here to make sure that you can come into your destiny. I'm here to train you up. This is what this whole institution is all about. This is why the church is here. So why? Till we all say all. No, all say all. all. No, let all, everybody say all. all. So till we all come to the unity of the faith, of the knowledge, of the Son of God. To what? A perfect man. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That, why? Read with me. We should no longer be children. No longer babies. No longer. That's what he's looking for. He's looking for the son. God's looking for the son that can steward the anointing. So why? That you should no longer be children because children are what? They tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning crafters of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head and Christ. So we're going to tell you the truth. Is it okay that your apostle tells you the truth? You know, don't tell. You, you keep looking for a prophetic word from somebody. Yeah, I've given you the prophetic word. You're going to sit down and you're going to eat this broccoli and it's going to tell you the truth about who you are. Why would you want to live in deception your whole life? Why would you run from church to church instead of settling, settling down and saying, I need to hear what God's got to say about me? No one's going to clap their hands this morning. Say amen or say amen, but say something this morning. Because God is looking to mature you. God is looking to grow you up. Because, uh, listen, listen, listen to this, listen to this. <sighs> the hefty price you pay for not growing up into your sonship is a lifetime of bondage. Because whom the son sets free is free indeed. Listen, listen, listen. He is a true father who never turns over the scepter of his kingdom to unlearned children. I am a true father that I will hold back on certain things for certain people until they grow up. I mean, look, at, look at Jonathan. Jonathan never used to, you know, there was a season in Jonathan's life when they were like prophets and running after stuff, and I left him. I said, you want to do that? It's no problem. I, if, I'm after, if I'm not your father, no problem. Go and do what you need to do. But I cannot give you your inheritance. I can't unlock it for you until you sit down and you are submitted. When Jonathan came back, he says, I'm here. You hear him speak. I'm going nowhere. It's not like he never tried. It's not like he never went dating outside of Kingdom Life Embassy. But he came home, amen. And he's been trained up as a son. And I've received him. And we've trained the boy and we've developed him. So when the prodigal comes home, the number one thing for a prodigal is not to wash him down and to put him sandals and a robe and a ring. That's not what it is. Go and listen to the scriptures. He says he cut, he slaughtered the fatted calf. What is that? Milk is for babies. Meat is for the matured. I had to go and cut meat for this boy. So you sit down and you're going to eat this meat. And I'm telling you the way it works in the kingdom of God. We need the evangelists. But as a child, you can't run around, go and find everybody's doctrine and try and figure out what your life is all about. No wonder people are sick spiritually. You can't have dessert and then, you know, go somewhere else and find this dessert and then some, some, you can't eat Christmas pudding the whole year. (laughs) 
You need to grow up in all things. We need to tell you the truth. And only the truth will get you to grow up. And so this is what the enemy wants you to do. <sighs> Write this down. Write this down. Put this in. This is, this is worth tweeting about. Regardless of how much God loves them, children are never recognized by Him as rulers. As much as God loves you, God will never put keys in the hands of a baby. As much as God loves you, you keep on looking for, 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 for affirmation from the world and trying to find answers in the world. You are lacking a, a baby. You've got you to grow up. And you've got to get some meat. Because meat is for the matured. Juveniles can't handle an inheritance. We're dealing with the wealth transfer. People that God can trust this morning to go and become what God has called them to be. Because he needs a son and a daughter. Not a baby. Sons know that they were made to rule. Romans 8.14 For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are babies. Romans 8.14 Come on, read with me. For as many, for as many, that means all of us can be. That means that all of us can be, right? For as many. Are you part of the many? Are you in the many? Can it be you? Could it be you? Is it possible? Can you be a son of God? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, led by the anointing of God, these, these are sons of God. The Spirit of God will tell you, don't be connected to that people. You love them and your friends and uh, you, the, Lord, the Spirit of God will tell you, no, don't, you, you, n n babies are driven by circumstances. Sons are led by the Spirit. They function with a whole different kind of anointing. They function on a level that is different to the world. That means God can send them into a place. And God knows that they will stay in that place. And that they will be faithful in that place. Because they are led by the Spirit of God. I know they said it's a better job. I know that that's what they're saying. I'm really good. I should be studying that. What is the Spirit of God saying to you? I know you feel like you want to go to wherever. You are a son of God. And you're not allowed to just go anywhere because... You're just driven by circumstances. I had a youngster call me 12, 13 in the night through Messenger on, on Facebook. I'm like, are you crazy? Put the thing off. He then calls me back in, a, in another hour, about you know, a decent hour, like 9 o'clock in the morning. And so I decided, let me take this call. The youngster came here to church three years ago. And he says, I'm going to a place, they're going to take care of me, and they're going to pay me well. Where is he now? In China. Can't move. Stuck in a place. Coronavirus. On lockdown. Apostle, pray for me. You keep being driven by circumstances. Wanting this is best for me. What a baby is that? I mean, God, we covered him and we're praying for his protection. That God will bring him home safely and that he's, that he's safe in a place. Look, even if God calls you to China, if that thing happens, it will not happen to you. Why? You are covered in the place because God has sent you to that place. The safest place to be is in the center of God's will. And a son of God understands that. I must be about my father's business, not my own business. You keep connecting with people that's got nothing to do with the kingdom of God. You keep getting involved in projects that's got nothing to do with the kingdom of God. You must be about your father's business. Let's, let's, let's move. Let's move. So the world system is built on and controlled by the spirit of mammon. So a house, the wealth of a spiritual house is determined by the sons in the house, not the babies. Say it again. 
the wealth in any house is determined not by the babies, by the sons in the house. So when God speaks about wealth, He's not talking about money. So money makes the world, their world go round. In the kingdom of God, it's built on the number of sons that come into their maturity. Because only sons can advance the kingdom's work. So a son is a new creation of God that is a steward of the anointing. What is a son? Is a new creation of God that is a steward of God's anointing. You might not know who you are, but Satan certainly does. Because since you are born again, you are anointed. Are you saved? Then you are anointed. Come on somebody, say I'm anointed. So Jesus died to get the anointing in you. He died so that the power of his anointing can rest on you. That's what he died for. That you don't have to be an ordinary person anymore. That you're not functioning like anybody. You can't stand in the queue with everybody else. Come on, somebody, with the favor of the Lord upon your life, they're going to move you from the bottom. Come on. He's made you the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. That whatever you put your hands to, it will prosper. Not because you're saying so, but because of the anointing. It's the burden removing, yoke destroying, power of God. So, you were born of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. You are born from another kingdom. And all that comes from that kingdom is now placed within you. Please write this down. Satan is not afraid of you. But he's terrified of the anointing on you. Shoo. Shoo. Satan is not afraid of you. He is not afraid of you. He is terrified of the anointing that's on you. And he doesn't want you to know that you are anointed. That there's healing on the inside of you. That there's prosperity on the inside of you. That there is an anointing for wealth on the inside of you. That wherever you enter into the marketplace, you have an anointing. And the power of God upon your life to bring victory wherever you go. I need a shot from the sons in this house. He's not afraid of you. When you came into, into the kingdom, now the kingdom is within you. Here's the problem. The kingdom, what is the kingdom? It's the rule of God. It's the realm of God. It's the royalty of God. The rule is what? The principles that govern the anointing to operate in your life. For most babies, listen now, for babies, they've come into the kingdom, but they've not discovered how to govern themselves. They always need somebody else to speak to them. They always need somebody else to watch over them. There's no principle on the inside of them to govern them. There's nothing that they have inside of them that says, I can't go there. Or I can't be connected to this person. Or the Holy Spirit is not alive. The anointing that they have, they don't understand that the power of God and the voice of God becomes the number one thing for a son of God. They get influenced by the world and lose sight of the kingdom. They don't take territory because they don't understand the rule of God. When God gives you principles in His kingdom, it's so that the anointing upon your life can work, so it can function. How do I know somebody is, doesn't understand? That? How do I know you're dealing with a baby? Listen, you can be 90 years old and still be a baby in the kingdom of God. How do I know that? Anytime someone looks for money, the kingdom is not there in their thinking. They have no understanding about the kingdom and its rule. Luke 17, 21. This is good preaching this morning. No will they say, see here or see there. Where's the kingdom? Come on, read with me. Where's the kingdom? Come on, I'm, I'm giving you a hint. Look at my hand, look at my hand. There's the answer. Where's the kingdom? It's in you. And the kingdom is a place of order. So everything in my house must come into a place of order. Why? The kingdom's not out there. The kingdom's in here. 
The place of order is inside of me. That's why when I walk into a place, everything must, get, must come into order. Come on, anybody understand what I'm saying? That sickness can't rest in a place. Why? There's a man of order. There's a woman of order. Your company can't go down. Why? Because of the anointing inside of you. It brings order into a place. All of a sudden, the order, the anointing inside of you, you go into an environment. There's a woman that called me us in to come and pray over a business. She runs a, a boutique hotel, but she's losing money. And she calls us into the place, and I go into that place to go and pray. 24 hours. Every person has been stealing from her. All the books of what did everything came out. Got exposed in 24 hours. Why? Because when the kingdom comes into a place, there's got to be order all around you. I need somebody to clap their hands and believe me this morning that you cannot die in dysfunction. You will not walk and be out of position. Anybody around you, you sickness can't stay around me. No, 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 no. No one around Jesus died. Nobody. Your sickness and your disease, it cannot rest in your body. Why? The Kingdom is in you. All God needed to do was not, it's pointless having land if you don't have even a thinking of order. Why should God give you a house? Why should God give you a wardrobe? Why should He give you more clothing? Because you go into your wardrobe, you must go and find order. Not because it won't look good, it's because it's in here already. It's called the anointing. That's why you can't be dysfunctional around your money. There's got to be order in your money. There's got to be order in your gift. Why? I'm not driven by circumstances. I am led by the Spirit of God. Say amen. When the kingdom comes inside of you, it's all about dominion. It's about ruling. It's about becoming fruitful. That's why he says, don't worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or what you're going to wear. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. That means bring the rule of God and the kingdom of God into your midst. And you're going to have peace. You're going to have prosperity. You're going to have the provision. You're going to have the protection. Take the anointing and manifest it as a son of God. Please hear me now. There is a difference between money and wealth. Psalm 112 verse 3. Uh, uh. Jesus never worked for money a day. Why? The anointing will bring everything that you need to live a life of victory. The anointing attracts money. It attracts what you need. What is God promised in your house? Wealth and riches will be in His house. That's what God has promised. There's a difference between the wealth and riches and money. <sighs> Do you understand? Money is a construct of a fallen world. That's why you can have the yen, the rand, the dollar, the euro, the pound, what is that? It's a man-made man -made construct that you've been running after. And they can change it as they wish. Yet when we speak about gold or platinum and silver, it's the same in every nation. Because wealth and riches, the Lord says the gold is mine, the silver is mine. Because that's where the true riches is. It's not in the money that you're looking for. It's not in the money that you are looking for. It's not in the fact that I got the salary. That's got nothing to do with the anointing. It's what the enemy keeps you in bondage with. You cannot serve God and money. Because the spirit of mammon is they're going to offer you some more money to stay. And you, I'm getting ahead of myself. Watch. Luke chapter 16, verse 10. Whew. He who is faithful in what is least is also faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. 
Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, what is that? Money. In the kingdom of God, money is the least. In the kingdom. He says, if you've been unfaithful with money, if you've been faithful with unrighteous mammon, you then can be faithful with the true riches. If you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust true riches? What's he talking about? He's talking about the anointing. Who's going to give it to you? Who, how can God, if you, if you haven't taken care of the money, if you can't manage money, if, 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 if money controls you, I can't give you the anointing. If every decision that you make is because of the money that's in your pocket, I can't trust you with the true riches of the kingdom of God. The true riches is an anointed son. Where money doesn't control your decisions. How do I know? Well, God tells you to sow something, but the money tells you, I ain't going anywhere because I'll make sure you run out. If you can't handle money, how can you handle the anointing? The test for the anointing is found in how you deal with finances. Can God direct your finances? Can God decide where you go? Can, can God put, tell you where to sow and how to move? Can, can you do that? If not, you're still controlled by the spirit of mammon. But if you've not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? Money becomes the controlling force for many people's lives. That's why they don't serve God. And it's sometimes when you're breaking from that system, it's tough earning the money that I did 25 years ago, 20 years ago, and running my own call center. And God shuts it all down. And I said, God, what are you doing? I can help you. He says, mammon can't help me. You need the anointing, my boy. When the anointing comes on you, all that you lost is coming back anyway. The finances will, you will control it. Come on, you're going to be in charge. You were made to rule. Money wasn't made to rule you. You touch my stuff, no problem. Just don't touch my anointing. Because with the anointing, I'm getting everything else back. I'm getting everything that I've lost. Everything is coming back. You don't, you're messing with the wrong person. You touch my car, I'm getting back two. You touch my home, you think you can steal them? I'm going to get back ten. Because what do I do? The anointing will go into the enemy's camp and fetch everything that belongs to you and give it back to you brand new. Touch my car, touch, I'm like, ah. Uh, I don't need it anyway. I, I'm done with that one anyway. Because when the anointing of God's upon your life, you don't run after things. And the enemy's got people chasing after things and ignoring the anointing that's on them. The devil is a liar. I said, the devil is a liar. Keep going. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he'll be loyal to the one and despise the other. Come on, read with me. You cannot serve God and mammon. You must make up your mind that you're going to live with the anointing. I do everything to protect the anointing of God upon my life. I don't go to places not because I don't feel better, like I'm better than anybody else. I don't hang around certain people. I, I don't read certain books. I don't get connected for a reason. I'm not better than anybody else. I'm just protecting the anointing of God upon my life. I can't watch everything. I can't listen to everybody's rubbish and unbelief. I can't be going to every conference and doing anything because, everything because I am guarding the anointing of God upon my life. There is an oil on my life. There's an oil on your life that I'm asking you who you've been handing it out to. Who do you keep on getting alongside? Have you, have you found certain people when you get along them, when you leave that meeting, you feel drained? It's like, oh, Jesus. I could have just prayed for this thing a long time ago and say bye-bye. So long bye-bye. Listen now. 
God never speaks to us in terms of money. He never does. Because money never came from God. Wealth and riches comes from God. Hallelujah. I've got to end. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 25. Hear me today, child of God. Please hear me. The kingdom is not about money. It's not about money. It's about the anointing. It's about taking territory. And if you don't understand that, you're going to frustrate your whole life looking for money. You are not supposed to be running around looking for money. Please hear your apostle today. Another, they, the reason why we built this campus and why we have the click ministry and why we have the kingdom academy and why we have the raw men's ministry and why we have pure and why we have the volunteers and why we have the training development that we have the kings around the table, the reason why we have evangelism. Every single one of them are running to a certain place. There is an end game for what we are doing. There is a reason why we connect. There's a reason why it's not just trying to keep you busy. There is a purpose for your life. It means I'm going out of a baby stage and I'm coming into my sonship. Because there's an inheritance with your name on it. Please watch now. Another parable he put forth to them saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, it's not a time to sleep, I'm telling you. Too much happening in the kingdom. His enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced the crop, then the tears also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not, know, did you not sow good seed in your, in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us, Oh, please remember this. Do you now want us to now go and gather them and uh, then go and gather, uh, gather them? He said, No. He said, but he said, No. Lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. So he's telling them this parable. But listen how powerful it is. Verse 36. Matthew 13, 36. You there? Jesus sends the multitude away. Like Kingdom Life Embassy coming here this morning. And went into the house. And his disciples came to him saying, explain. You must ask questions, child of God. You must ask questions. Don't sit there in ignorance. A son must ask questions. Even, even Jesus as a child was asking questions. It's a good thing to ask questions. He came to him saying, explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. Is there a purpose why Kingdom Life Embassy exists? Is there a vision? Is there a mission? Is there a reason why business people are coming together? Is there a reason why the education systems are coming together? Why are we in media? Why are we doing what we're doing? Why the Four Change Foundation? Ask the questions. Ask the questions. What's this church all about? Ask the questions. Ask, what, it, what does this mean? He answered and said to them, He sows, he who sows the good seed, someone say good seed, is who? The son of man. So when God sows you, when God sends you, discover, develop, deploy. That's a process in what we're developing in discipleship. To discover who you are, to develop as a son of God, and then to be deployed in your assignment. He says, he who sows the good seed is the son of man. So Jesus is the one sitting on a son of, a son of God. He says, this is my field. Now watch. The field is what? The world. The field is not the church. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. 
Are you a son of the kingdom? You are supposed to be a good seed. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is who? So while you're in the marketplace, and while you are trying to function in your companies, there's both good seed and evil seed. One is sent by God, others are sent by the devil. Yeah, 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 your, your boss is the devil. I didn't say you must say that you're going to get fired for that. You were supposed to be developed as God's seed into the field called the world. Education system, media, government, business, whatever your gifting is, you were supposed to be sown into the world. Your life was supposed to mean something for what you're doing. Not coming to church on a Sunday, acting one way, and then tomorrow you act like the devil. That means if you're acting like the devil six days a week, and you pretend on a Sunday morning for two hours, then you're sitting in here as a seed sown by the devil. Your father's the devil. It's in the Bible. The harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned into the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. Please hear me today. If you don't develop as a son of God, you'll be under the control of the devil and his wickedness out in the world. You're saved, but you can't go and operate in the marketplace with the anointing. You have to beg people. You've got to go and beg for to sleep with somebody to get a job. Get involved in all kinds of activity because you don't understand who you are. Some people in this place, I've seen people that are anointed for, for real estate, playing games. 10 rand here, 20, playing games. You should be taking over the whole street, not buying a house. Why? Because the kingdom is about territory, not about money. You were supposed to go and build this real estate the way God gave it. You were supposed to be the one that, not go, I, I want to go buy me mag wheels. Go and buy yourself your own brand of tiger wheel and tire. Take over the old, your own franchise. Why don't you own the whole franchise? Oh, I like to buy cars. Why don't you own a dealership? And in there you can say every year I give away 10 cars every year. Where does it come from? It comes from the house of God. You were trained with the principles. You get trained in the church, you function in the world. You get trained in the church, you function in the world. You get trained in the house of God, you function in the world. You get trained here, you are, God sows you there. The Bible says He plants the righteous amongst the wicked. Your anointing was supposed to speak for you. The sales cannot be the same like everybody else. I'm not using the world system. I'm using the anointing. I want to speak that upon somebody today. That the anointing of God's going to increase in your life. They cannot help but promote you. You are a child and a son of God. You are about your father's business. You are not tolerating this world and its systems anymore. Every demonic seed that is even in, your, in, your, in, in that place that doesn't belong, that, that's con trying to control you, the anointing is going to eject it this week. The anointing of God upon your life is going to eject every ungodly thing that refuses to go and follow the order of God. For no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. You are anointed for service. You are son of God. You are carrying an anointing wherever you go. The wisdom of God must show up. Answers must come to naughty problems. No one can keep you down. Every problem has got to move. You're going to get promoted for solving problems. David, where are you this morning? Where are you this morning? Stop messing with the world. Stop dancing with the world, expecting a kingdom result. Stop messing and, and, and kissing uh, all the frogs uh, and thinking that you're going to carry the anointing. We need a son of God and a daughter of God that can get up and say, I can't do this. <laughs> Joseph ran. Joseph ran from that woman. A desperate woman wanting to sleep with him. Listen to what Joseph says. He didn't say, I can't. Your husband employed me. What's he going to say? He says, I can't do this to my God. 
I can't sin against God. Why? Joseph was protecting the anointing on his life. Stop dishing out your anointing, getting involved with people that are not interested in the kingdom of God. When there are billionaires in this place, i got to preach about wealth. i got to preach about this thing. But it's not, gonna, it's not about money. It's about the anointing. It's about the power of God. He says, I'm, he didn't say I'm going to give you money. He said, I'm going to give you power to get wealth. What is that? It's the anointing. It's the anointing. It's the power of God upon your life. Let's explain. Are we still there? Uh, go back to the scriptures with me. Where was I? You see, Michaela, she leaves this week and goes to Australia. And her gift, she's carrying an anointing. What's God doing? He's planting her in His field, in the world, so she can represent the King of Kings. She's not looking for money. She's going to fulfill purpose. And they're calling in her, and their gift will make room for her and bring her before. She's on assignment. She's not looking for a job. She's looking to fulfill purpose. That's been her fasting and her prayer. The money's there. And there are people who will take care of her. But more importantly, the favor of the Lord is upon her because favor is also a currency. <laughs> Let's be done. The field is not the church. The field is not the church. The field is the world. And sons can only operate in that place. Ah. Uh. Write this down. Maturity in the kingdom of God is measured by the number of things you're willing to give up in order to grow up. <laughs> Maturity in the kingdom of God is the number of things you're willing to give up so you can grow up. It, that's how it's measured. I want to do this thing, but I'm not going to do it. I want to go, I'm skilled. I have the ability. I, can, I have an opportunity. You, I, I've got this, this proposal. I've got this offer. The Bible says Moses refused to partake. Do you have enough faith to refuse? Do you have the faith to refuse a relationship? Faith to refuse certain people in your life? Faith to refuse certain offers? Can you have faith to refuse? That's a son of God. I see some of you lifting your hands up and say, Pastor, we're full now. We don't want to eat anymore. It's too much meat, Pastor. Faith to refuse. I refuse to go with you. I refuse to hang out with you. Yeah, but I got for, I, I refuse. Then I'll stay single. Thank you very much. But you with your stinky toes, you can keep it. You don't want to serve God because you are part of the tears. That's a problem. And sons, you've got to be careful. Hang out with those people long enough. Eventually, you become a tear. You, you, you can mutate. And your heart can shift. Hang out with the wrong people and not operating as a son of God. The anointing is very expensive. Once the anointing goes, all we're left is the, is the naked you. And the you are pretty useless. I am pretty useless without the anointing. I can't give you anything unless God's anointing flows through me. You can't get healed. You can't get money. You must operate like an ordinary man. The Bible says when the anointing came upon Saul, he turned into another man. Don't let the enemy rob you by offering you money. For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What if a man gains the whole world and loses his soul. There's always an exchange taking place when you're in the world. And bargaining with the devil. Always an exchange. What's he after? He's after your soul. He's after that anointing that you carry. Stop believing the lie that I can go everywhere, hang out with anybody. Because they were friends before. Does not mean that they're friends now. Go and do a Facebook friends check, man. Go and do a delete.
Because there are people that the enemy is using. And listen to me, man. If I have to choose between you and the anointing, you're going to go. No, you've got to learn to say that. Just nod your neighbor and say, don't make me choose. Don't, don't, don't make me choose. Say, say it like that. Don't make me choose because the anointing is precious. The anointing is going to bring in the money. You want to fire me? No problem. I'm going to earn in dollars, baby. You pay me one month, I'm going to get paid what you gave me a whole year. I'm going to get in one month because God's going to pay me in dollars. Why? I am anointed. I'm too anointed to be disappointed. The hand of God is upon my life. Now listen now. Francis Frangipani says, Satan fears virtue. He's most terrified of humility. He hates it. He sees a humble person and it sends chills down his back. His hair stands up when Christians kneel down for true humility is the surrender of the soul to God. The devil trembles before the meek because in the very areas where he once had access, there stands the Lord. And Satan is terrified of Jesus Christ. He's terrified of the anointing. Of course, he's got no answer to it. Money must bow. Healing must flow. Peace must come. Order must come. Breakthrough on every level must come. Why? Because you are anointed. You, are an, you came to the service this morning. It's not about money, man. It's about the anointing. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world? yet loses his soul. Or what will a man give in exchange? He's always looking to bring an exchange in your life. He wants you to give up something for him to give you something. He's always going to offer you something. And so after you've gotten all the stuff, your relationship with God doesn't exist anymore. The church doesn't matter to you anymore. The connect group's not important to you anymore. Because you're chasing after things your whole life. And you die a broke person. All the stuff in your house, nobody coming to visit you because nobody likes you. What if a man gains the whole world yet loses his soul? You should be about your father's business. There is a business that he's running and it should take every one of us and plant us in the world, in his field. So we can become all that God has called us to be. Stand with me this morning.